the study of Quran. The study of Quran by Sayyid Hussein Masri is a recent translation of the Quran by individuals lacking expertise in both the Quran and Arabic or recognized scholarships in Islam. This is evident from the numerous contradictions and inaccuracies in their translation. The issues can be categorized into three areas. First, translation inaccuracies lead into misinterpretations of verses. Second, inclusion of commentaries contradicting fundamental Islamic principles and tajweed. Third, lack of references for commentaries and inclusion of dubious stories not aligned with Islam. We will examine these faults closely to provide a comprehensive understanding before summarizing our findings and takeaways. Translation inaccuracies that lead to incorrect meaning for the verses. The following are a few examples of the inaccuracies and its effect on changing the meaning. The first example, the name of God, Allah, is translated in the study of Quran as God, when in fact the name of Allah should be preserved and kept as Allah. This is aligned with all names mentioned in the Qur'an. For example, we do not translate the name of the Prophet Muhammad as the one who is praised or praiseworthy. This is why all accurate translation and Muslims around the world translate La ilaha illallah as there is no God but Allah. While the study Qur'an translated it as There is no God but God, which does not clearly state who is the second word God represents. The authors failed in the simplest translation of the Qur'an. How can we trust them in other more complex things? What is the meaning of there is no God but God versus the right translation which is there is no God but Allah? Imagine if every reference to Shakespeare simply read the playwright. This is the challenge we face with translation choices in the study of Qur'an. How can we accept a translation that replaces the unique name of Allah the general term, diluting the identity and specific relevance intended in the original text. Moving on to the next example, the study of Qur'an translated the Arabic word Jannah as the garden. And all Muslims in the world and across the ages have understood this is paradise. Simple and clear, the garden or a garden is not Jannah. The paradise have several characteristics that are quite different and unique from a pure garden. Furthermore, the study of Qur'an translated Al-Nar as the fire, while the correct translation is Hellfire. The Kursi in Al-Baqarah is translated as pedestal instead of the throne or the seat. Moreover, and across all of the Qur'an, the study of Qur'an translation of Muslims is submitters, not Muslims. In verse 126 of Surah Al-A'raf, the study of Qur'an translation of Muslim is submitters, which is not accurate and does not convey the meaning of belief in bowing to his will. There is also very poor choice of translation for certain words. For example, the translation of taqwa in Surah Al-A'raf. The study of Qur'an translation of taqwa is Be mindful of the day, not guard yourself from a day. Guard yourselves reflects belief and action taken, whereas be mindful focuses on awareness about the day without the actions or preparation. Clear contradictions and violation to the basic principles of Islam and teaching. The oneness of Allah is a fundamental belief in Islam, reiterated in various forms and places in the Qur'an. It serves to teach pure tawheed and proper worship of Allah alone. The Qur'an and the Sunnah consistently portray prophets as trustworthy and ethical. However, the commentary in the study of Qur'an translation deviates from these principles by distorting Islamic teachings. It mixes Islamic accounts with non-Islamic sources, including biblical teachings and personal views of the study of Qur'an authors. This creates confusion as readers may mistake these distortions for Islamic teachings. The study of Qur'an often uses vague references to unnamed commenters without reciting their work or establishing its credibility. It mixes Islamic accounts with non-Islamic sources, including biblical teachings, rumors, history books, and reference materials such as many scholars believe 
and personal views of the Sariq Quran authors. The Sariq Quran is a spaghetti of information from various sources that are not vetted or derived from the actual text of the Quran. Allah Almighty says in the Quran, there are some among them who distort the book with their tongues to make you think this distortion is from the book, but it is not what the book says. The Sariq Quran blends Islamic teachings with unvetted sources and personal views, confusing readers on what the Islamic faith teaches. The first example is that the Sariq Quran includes an unauthentical description attributed to Ali bin Abi Talib, stating that he said, I am that dot, which attributes a certain divinity rank to himself. This contradicts the oneness of Allah and Tawheed. This statement, falsely attributed to Ali, raises the question, why does the Sariq Quran include such statements? Why does the Sariq Quran not reject such claims? Moving to the next example, the Sariq Quran commentary on verses 12-24 regarding Prophet Yusuf erroneously suggests that he desired Zulaikha, which is not supported by the Quranic narrative. The Quran portrays Prophet Yusuf as a paragon of faith, integrity, wisdom, and forgiveness. The study of Quran fails to emphasize Islam's clear stance against such allegations. Any person reading the text of the Quran will see that the commentary attributed to a specific verses are nowhere to be found in the verses. Why would a Bible text slandering the Prophet be mentioned in the Quran commentary of the study of Quran? Why does not the study of Quran state that Islam teaching is completely against these allegations mentioned in the Bible? The study of Quran fails to uphold Islam's unequivocal stance against such allegations, leaving us to question its fidelity to the sacred text. The last example spread in unreferenced bizarre ideas, such as the rumor, by some that some believe that the real crime of the people of Lut was forcible psalmody rather than consexual homosexual relations. This is, of course, completely wrong and made up. We don't know who are those people labeled as some, and why such bizarre statement was put in a Quran commentary. Who are these mysterious some who we propagate such falsehoods, and why are their unsubstantiated claims given a platform in a Quranic commentary? Conclusion The study of Quran contains unverified rumors, uncited unreliable stories, and falsehoods in its Quranic commentary. These elements often contradict basic Islamic teachings and have no basis in the Quranic text being translated. The Quranic study provides unvetted information without any regard for authenticity of such information. The study of Quran provides unreliable stories, untrustworthy narrators, as Islamic mainstream teachings. These elements often contradict basic Islamic teachings and have no basis in the Quranic texts being translated. The study of Quran is a biased translation aimed at misleading English speakers unfamiliar with Islam and undermining its beliefs. Numerous reviews highlight its errors and shortcomings. The commentary in the study of Quran diverges from Quranic and Sunnah teachings admitting to including their own commentary, now found in, in earlier sources. It relies on unreliable sources, including unverified stories and scholars from centuries past, without regard for accuracy or credibility. The authors have failed to vet the information properly and neglected to clarify their stance on rejecting such content. A lot of liberties were taken to present unreferenced materials, extreme minorities, or unclear opinions as sound opinions. As a result, the study of Qur'an is completely unsuitable for academic reference or study. People read the Qur'an to study or apply its teachings to their daily lives. Therefore, the interpretations and teachings derived from it should be sourced from trustworthy Muslim scholars. A trustworthy scholar is one who consistently provides accurate, correct, and referenced teachings, ensuring reliability and authenticity. When we refer to a Muslim scholar, we are acknowledging their profound knowledge in their specialized field, whether it be Quranic studies, hadith, fiqh, or history. Unfortunately, none of the authors are recognized scholars of Quran. 
the translation has not been endorsed by recognized Muslim Council. The study of Quran decided not to include Arabic text of the Quran for some odd reason. If the Arabic text was present and a reader can immediately translate the Arabic verses to know that such commentaries are not derived from the verses and has nothing to do with the verses without constantly referring to the original Arabic text no one will have any chance to comprehend the meaning of the Qur'an. Those who are looking for a truly reliable translation and understanding of the Qur'an, the study of Qur'an is not the book. We recommend individuals interested in learning or studying the Qur'an to use other translations that are accurate and authentic. Examples of accurate translations and credible commentaries are the Holy Qur'an translation by Yusuf Ali, the Sahih International Translation, published by Dar al-Qaysam, The Clear Qur'an by Mustafa Khattab. This is not to say that these two are the only accurate and reliable translation of the Qur'an, but these translations were well studied by our team and are widely accepted by the majority of the Muslims, individuals and organizations for their accuracy, ethnicity, and credibility.